Well, good morning, and may God's richest blessings be yours on this Lord's Day. I'm Dave, pastor appointed to serve in this parish, the Hightstown and Clarksburg United Methodist Congregations of Northern Montgomery County, Maryland, Baltimore, Washington Conference. As the people of God, we gather to learn from the scriptures, to offer our thanks and praise along with our prayers and supplications, and to reflect on how God is seeking to direct us. Those three emphases provide the general outline for our three weekly videos. This video considers the scripture lessons appointed for the week. As has been my practice, studiously avoiding republishing copyrighted materials, except with explicit permission, what I offer here are my own paraphrases of the lessons. We do take the scripture seriously. As we begin, we pray. God of hope, by faith we know that you created the world, and that what is seen is made by things that are not visible. Open our eyes to your presence among us, that we may hear your word with clarity and a sureness of hope, as we follow you in all righteousness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Genesis 15, part of the story of Abraham. In the days of Abraham, while Lot resided in one of the cities of the plain, raiders descended on the cities, overrunning their defenses and looting the cities and carrying off captives to become slaves. Hearing of this, Abraham organized a rapid strike force to catch and punish those raiders. He was successful, returning with the prisoners and the stolen loot. He would accept no reward for what he had done, but returned it all to the original owners. That's how Abraham earned the goodwill of the kings of Sodom and of Salem. In Genesis 15, we read, After all this, again the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. The Lord promised to reward Abraham and to be his protector. But Abraham asked the Lord how the Lord could possibly reward him, since Abraham was childless, and someone not of his family was set to inherit all that he had. The Lord said, This one will not be your heir. A child of your very own will become your heir. And the Lord led Abraham outside to look at the night sky. How many stars can you see? Your descendants will be numerous, just like that. Now, Abraham trusted God, and really, that was all God was seeking from him. Psalm 33 picks up some of these themes. Uh, Psalter 87.
reading from the prophets this week is from Isaiah, chapter 1. The Lord gave a vision to Isaiah, son of Amos, concerning the southern kingdom during the time of kings Uzziah, Ahaz, Jotham, and Hezekiah. Hear what the Lord has to say to you, you who are as corrupt as the cities of the plain during the time of Abraham and Lot, cities that were destroyed, and no trace remains. Your bloody sacrifices and offerings are worthless. Did I require these of you? Stop bringing them. In fact, just stay out of my house. Your offerings have no value. Your incense is only a stench. You gather and make merry on holiday. But the Sabbath is not to be holiday, but a day of holiness. All of your business of religiosity is just so much busyness. I hate it all. It wearies me to no end. If you come back into my house, I'll ignore you. You scream and wail in prayer, but I will not hear. You're contaminated by the blood of your victims, so clean up your act. It's time for a total house cleaning. Stop doing what I hate and learn to do what is right. Make justice for all truly your guiding star. Rescue those whom others have ruined. Become a loving forever home for those who've lost their families. And those who've lost, lost their spouse, make sure they survive. It is like this. By your actions, you appear as blood-soaked butchers. How can clothes soaked in blood be made clean? If they're dyed scarlet, shall they become bright white? I've put before you the way of life. Actions have consequences. So choose wisely, choose well. Clean up your act. Choose life. The alternative is unthinkable. A word of the Lord. Psalm 50 picks up themes parallel to this reading. We're using Psalter 139. In Hebrews chapter 11, we find these words. Trusting God gives us confidence that our hopes will be fulfilled. Steadiness, even though appearances would shake us. It is this confidence in God that made our ancestors acceptable to God. Though we do not understand, we trust that all things were formed by the word of God. Things we can touch coming from things we cannot feel or see. Abraham was one who trusted. 
setting out for horizons unknown in order to receive a new home. For years he camped out, a stranger in the land he'd been promised. As heirs of the promise, so also did his son Isaac and his grandson Jacob. They were anticipating a house, a city, a homeland, designed and built by the Almighty. It was the same trust that made Abraham and Sarah parents, though to all appearances they were far too old. They believed the one who had promised, and as a result, a family innumerable was born to these two who were good as dead. How many stars in the sky, how many grains of sand on the beach, the Almighty had promised, and the Almighty delivered. Now all of these died well before the promises were fulfilled, but they believed and trusted the promises, and so they knew the day would come. They lived as strangers, wanderers in a foreign country, seeking a homeland. They could have chosen to go back, to what they'd left behind, but they were looking forward to something better. There is a homeland, a better one, a heavenly homeland to come. The God who promises fulfills the promise, and God embraces those who will trust in God. The Gospel lesson continues reading from the Gospel of Luke. We've skipped past a few verses. I'll be talking about that in the sermon a little bit. We're now at Luke 12, beginning at verse 32. Jesus said, Release all that anxiety, wondering where your next meal is going to come from. That's the behavior of those who don't know our God. Your Father knows your needs, so concern yourself with the kingdom, and the rest will be sorted out. Have no fear. God's design, God's purpose, is to give you the kingdom. So instead of accumulating baggage, sell all that stuff. Give the money to those in need. God will see what you've done, and you will be rich in God's sight. Heavenly riches no one can steal. No fire can burn. No flood can wash away. If your riches are in heaven, that's where your heart will be too. Remember how at the Exodus everyone was dressed and ready to roll as soon as it was time? So also we are to remain at the ready, anticipating that moment when the kingdom is fulfilled. We want to be among those who are alert, welcoming the master at his return. Those servants who are found to be on task and ready will enjoy a rich banquet, with our Lord hosting it. It doesn't matter what time he returns. Just be ready. A parable for you. If a homeowner could predict the moment the thief would enter the house, wouldn't they lay in wait to deal with the thief? Contrarywise, the owner is coming at an unexpected time. So just remain at the ready. Servant who is not mindful of his tasks will get what he deserves. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In response to our readings today, let's sing the song from The Faith We Sing, We Walk by Faith.
today's gospel reading began with the words of Jesus saying, don't be afraid. And that's the theme of our postlude, Gift to the Wind, Thy Fears, a prayer before the postlude. O God of promise, creator of the cosmos, you are the first light breaking through the void and the final light we shall enjoy eternally. Keep our hearts ever vigilant as we wait to welcome you, that you would find us clothed in love, dressed for action, and eager to receive you. Amen. Enjoy the postlude, and we'll be back after a while with prayer and praise. <laughs> 